What's up, everyone? This is the Manuscript Podcast, the podcast where we believe 21st century man controls his destiny, that his choices define his future, and that he writes the script to his own life. I'm your host and fellow man, Ruben Stamper, and as always, it is an honor, a pleasure, and a privilege to have you here with me today. Thank you so much for giving me your time. If you get something out of this video, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. But enough of this stupid housekeeping stuff. Let's get right into the substantive part of the podcast. This is the part where we talk about a principle or a value that applies to every man across the universe that will lead that man, myself included, to become the best version of himself, to actualize his potential. These are principles and values that have been you know, passed throughout the ages from generation to generation, and unfortunately, we have lost a lot of them uh, in our modern age in which we live, but we still aspire to them. We look at them and we say, damn, that would be nice to have. I wish you just had the stones to have that, that virtue or, you know, or to instill that principle into my life. The truth is, damn it, you can. You can. And so that's what this podcast is about in many ways. It is about leading you towards a happier life through helping you get control of yourself and to, to master all your assets, all your faculties, and order them towards your ultimate happiness. So a big part of that, and a big preliminary part of that anyways, is the virtues. So in the past couple episodes, we've talked about a couple different virtues. If you haven't watched those episodes, go back and check it out. But today is no different. We're talking about honesty. Let's get right into it. All right, everyone, saddle up your horses. We are talking all about the virtue of honesty. Now, Honesty is one of those virtues which I believe every man needs to instill in his life if he is going to reach that goal of happiness, of peace in his life. Honesty gives you like a, a profound sense of peace in your life when you are putting it into your life, when you're actually uh, working in accord with honesty. Now, honesty is not just truthfulness. This is, you know, this is one of the things I want to make clear from the get-go. Honesty deals with your own honor as well. You know, honesty and honor go hand in hand. And a lot of that honor deals with telling the truth. So they're related in that way. But honesty is not exactly the same as truthfulness. And so with all these virtues, I, I like to first off explain what, what the hell the virtue is, why the hell you should want it, and then how the hell you get it. <laughs> That's you know one of the, one of the formats I try, I try and play under when it comes to these virtues. So what is honesty? Honesty is the virtue which deals with not only lying, but actively saying the truth. Not only about the things outside yourself, but about yourself as well. And that second part, about yourself as well, that's the part I really want to focus on today. And that's what Aristotle focuses very deeply on when he talks about the three men in relation to honesty, the virtue of honesty. Uh, so... But also, one last thing, one little precursor before this. Courage and honesty go hand in hand. Being honest about yourself and your abilities and the type of man you are requires courage. Because sometimes it's easy to lie about yourself, to say, oh, I'm better than I actually am. But that's not the truth. And it leads to a ton of problems down the road. So if you're you know, searching for that that peaceful life, that joyful life, and ultimately that happy life, you must be honest. So let's dive right into the three men that Aristotle talks about in regards to the virtue of honesty. These three men are the boastful man, the mock modest man, and finally, the honest man. Obviously, we are shooting for the honest man, but I talk about all three of these men because they help you gauge where you're at in in relation to true honesty. So let's talk about the boastful man. The boastful man constantly overstates his accomplishments in order to make others think well of him. And sometimes he even believes it himself. You can imagine like the prime trash talker on the basketball court or, or any sporting, you know, platform like hockey or football, anything like that. You can imagine uh the guy is going out there and he's saying, I'm the best. I'm the next LeBron. You know, I'm I'm the next, you know, Jerry Rice. I'm, you know, um, I'm, the you know, you can think of the best sports player. I'm that guy, you know. And he goes out there and he's, he's bragging up a storm. And then he gets demolished by a guy that hasn't said a word. 
he's been quiet and he just pops off and he's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, this one guy, you know, was, was out there saying, I'm the best. I'm going to make every shot I get. And he's hogging the ball and he's shooting and shooting. He might be an okay player, but he's not that great. He's not as great as he's saying. And then he gets humbled real fast, real fast. And that'll happen in a lot of areas of your life. I mean, damn it. If you think that you're Superman and you go jump off a cliff, you're like, I'm going to fly away, you know? Well, that claim is not, is not, uh, this does not correlate to the reality of what you are. You go out there and say you're Superman, but you jump off the cliff, and you try and fly, and then you fall to your death. That's what would happen. You know, that's an extreme <laughs> instance where honesty, not being honest, would lead to your death. But you get the point. Being honest is crucial to to having a, a thriving life. So the, the boastful man... One of the things in our culture recently is, like, it, he gets so much airtime. The guy out there that is like, I'm the best. You know, I'm going to win the Super Bowl or I'm going to win the championship games. I'm going to do all this stuff. And he's constantly out there saying that and making these these outlandish claims and then never backing them up. He, he gets a lot of airtime. Why? Because he's loud. Because he's loud. And he says some controversial things. And he's like, oh, I've always been better than, than LeBron. I've always been better than Michael Jordan, you know, like, uh, you know, Tom Brady, pff, I'd, I'd beat the shit out of that guy in a football game. Like, guys go out there and they say these outlandish things, and then everybody wants to watch that. They're like, what? This guy's claiming this? Like, can he back it up? And then he never can back it up because he's not actually that good. But the boastful man, boastful man gets a lot of time uh, on air. And so, so why does he do this? The boastful man does this because he wants to be accepted by the community around him. And he wants to be seen as this great thing in this certain area of his life. It, you know, not just sports, but you know, I'm the best broker of these deals, or you know, I'm the best at international policy, or you know, I'm the best uh, crypto trader out there. You know, like there's all these guys out there that that want to believe this, and they make all these crazy claims, and then one day they look up and they're like, "Oh, my policies are falling apart. My crypto is down, you know, two hundred percent. What happened?" You know, because they. There wasn't alignment between their claims and who they actually are. And you'll see with the honest man, his claims are who he is. Like, that that's him. You know, he says, I am this way, then he is that way. Because he's truthful about it. Uh, okay, so we talked about the boastful man. Now let's talk about the mock modest man. Now this guy is actually pretty, I found, I have found, at least in my own life, I've found some pretty prevalent guys in this area. And so who is the mock modest man? He is the man who... Uh, Instead of over-exaggerating his abilities, he under-exaggerates. He's like, ah, I'm really not that good. I'm, really, I'm actually kind of shit at that. I'm really not that great. And uh, this is not really humility, by the way. This is, this is uh, beyond humility. This is actually very bad. right? So imagine that you have a five-star chef. Okay, He is top of the line, and he's one of your friends. He's one of your buddies. And you guys are having a get-together with a bunch of your friends, and you're trying to figure out who should cook. Well... One of your friends is a five-star chef. Everybody knows this. And people will ask him, like, oh, he's like, I'm actually not that good. I really don't make the best food. It's, it's, it's just, like, just kind of okay, all right? And that's not, that's not good because that's not him using his talents to help those around him. He's an amazing cook. He should be the, the person probably put in charge of making the meals or at least, you know, uh, giving you ideas for what meals should be made and how they should be made. <clears throat> And, you know, like one of the examples I give in my book is like, you know, in an active shooter situation, if this guy came into a building and started shooting, shooting people up, right? Well, and, and, you know, and I'm behind a table with a bunch of other dudes. And one of the dudes makes it clear that he's a Navy SEAL that's, you know, served three tours. Well, I, I should get behind his leadership. Why? Because he knows what he's doing much more than I do. Now, if I were to go out and claim, oh, I'm the best leader in the situation, I know what to do, you know, like, we're going we're gonna to do it this way, and, and that's going to cause the best result. I don't have the experience behind me to probably make that claim as much as he does. Those are his talents. That's what he does. That's his job, right? And so he would be the best person to lead in that circumstance. And so being the mock modest man actually hurts those around you, and it also it hurts yourself. It's lying about your true God-given abilities or self-attained if you're not a Christian, whatever you want to say. Uh, but your abilities, your talents, it is actually saying, no, I'm, I'm really not that good at that, at that thing. And the reason they do this is to avoid actually helping people. It's, it, you know, it, it, and it, it is to avoid uh, potentially 
failing, right? Because anytime you're put into a position of authority, there is the potentiality that you're going to fail at something, right? Maybe the, he is a five-star cook, but he messes up this recipe this one time. And then everybody looks at him and they laugh at him. You know, like that's what he's thinking in his head. Maybe. But that's not what, as a man, you're called to do. You are called to use your talents, use your abilities to help those around you. And so the mock modest man, he under-exaggerates his true abilities. And so he's actually, in a different way than the boastful man, not honest about himself. So that leads me to the last man that Aristotle talks about, and that is the honest man. The honest man, his, his uh, claims are completely in line with who he is. His abilities, his talents, he owns up to them when he's good at something. And he says, I'm very bad at something when he's bad at something. He's honest about his abilities. So, you know, if you're playing a game of flag football and he says, I'm, I can't catch the ball, I can't throw the ball, I'm pretty bad, then... If he's actually the honest man, then he's probably telling the truth there, right? That is, you know, maybe you don't pick him first in the lineup. You know, maybe he's tall and stuff, but he's like, I really don't have a lot of coordination. I'm pretty bad at this. Then maybe you don't pick him right away because he's being honest there. And if you know in the rest of his life he's been honest, then that would be a pretty good, pretty good take, pretty good bet to, bet to place. Uh, you know, but also if he's great at something, he will, he'll say it. He won't shy away from that. He won't hide from that. Let's say you're trying to get in shape and you need a personal trainer or you need somebody, you know, a, a buddy that you can rely on to get in shape. And you see that your buddy, we'll call him, we'll call him uh, John. Okay. So John, your buddy, John, he's jacked, like he's buff and you know, he goes to the gym and he works out a lot and he's, he's all natural, you know, he's not on roids. And so you're like, you go to John one day and you say, John, man, I really need some advice. Cause you know, I've, I've got some flab on me. I'm trying to lose some weight. Just trying to get healthier overall. Could you could you give me some like exercises, some tips, some you know s- some stuff on that front that that could help me get to to the, to, to reach my goals? And John goes, No, nah, man, I I don't actually know uh, anything about working out. You know, I'm 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 pretty shit at it myself actually. That's not being honest. Like he's he's got the the proof is in the pudding to a certain degree. You know, like he's in good shape. You know, he goes to the gym. So he should be a reputable source, a, a good teacher, a good mentor in that situation. But he is neglecting that that duty almost because because he's got the knowledge, he's got the experience, and he's your friend. He should help you out in that circumstance because he knows more than you do. But he doesn't, you know. So so the honest man would say, you know, if he was jacked and he knew, knew what he was doing in the gym, he would be like, yeah, man, I'll, absolutely, I'll help you out. I'll give you a couple of different exercises that are, are pretty basic that you can do that will help you, you know, attain that those goals if you just keep up, keep up with them and keep doing them. So that's the benefit of, of being honest is just, you know, honest about who you are and your abilities. I'm a big fan of the Cincinnati Bengals. And, R.I.P. this year, Joe Burrow hurt his hand. But, <laughs> but uh, two years ago, Joe Burrow led them to a Super Bowl, and he was asked by one of the sports commentators, like, what if you had to talk to a new QB, a new quarterback, and say, uh, you know, what's your, your one word of advice if you want to make it to the Super Bowl? And Joe Burrow, like, stopped for a second, and he said, uh, work in silence. Work in silence. He's like, you don't need to post every workout on Instagram. You don't need to be very loud about your abilities. He says, put in the work in silence. Don't let everybody see it. Just just grind it out. Keep working. Keep working. And then show up on Sunday and execute and make it happen. And I just love that. I thought that was pretty awesome. Now, obviously, I'm biased. I like the Cincinnati Bengals. But but that was pretty profound. What he said was like, work in silence. Just grind it out. You don't need to be flashy. And then you show up and you just you just execute. So I always thought that that was, was pretty cool. Uh, but then, you know, if you were to ask Joe Burrow, am I, are, you, are you a top-tier quarterback? You'd say, yeah, absolutely. I'm a top-tier quarterback. And I'm not trying to be arrogant about that. But that's just the fact of the matter. Like, you, you can look at me. I'm, I'm pretty damn good. Uh, and so anyways, we'll get off football. But, uh, but that's like that's what the honest man does. He is always in line with his abilities. And this helps him to be a great leader because he knows his strengths and his weaknesses. Uh, and so, so yeah, that's why you should be honest. Uh, now the question is, now that we've talked about those three men, how do you become honest? Well, the truth is you have to tell the truth in small and big situations time and time again. And this starts with the little white lies. It starts with, you know, 
anything that you say about yourself that's untrue and just deleting that shit out of your life. Smashing it with a hammer. Saying, you know what, the next time that I'm tempted when a girl asks me my height to say that I'm 6'2", I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest and say, eh, I'm 5'10", you know? Like, next time that my boss comes to me and says, hey, could you make this report, you know, and you say, I'm actually not that good at reports when, in fact, you were god tier at reports, like, don't do that. Say, yeah, absolutely, boss, I got this. I can do this. You know, you know I've done it before. I can do it again. You know, be honest about your character time and time again. <clears throat> and once again, this this deals very much with uh, proactive thinking, right? Before you do, the, you you answer. Before you before you make an action in the situation, you will step back and say, "Well, is what I'm about to say in line with who I actually believe I am? If I believe I'm great at making reports, then I should say yes." Absolutely, boss. I can help with the reports. If I think I'm really shitty at doing reports and I've never done it before, I'm not going to fake it till I make it and say, oh, well, yeah, of course I can, I can do this. You know, I'm going to be honest and say I, I haven't done it before. I'm willing to give it a shot, but just understand I, I haven't done this before and I'm still learning the whole report process. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's basically how you become honest. So I hope I've convinced you that being honest is, is, the, is the way to be. It makes life so much better. Uh, and then I, I want to conclude with this point. Honesty brings you peace. And it brings people around you peace. The idea that you are not constantly bragging about yourself, but you are truthful about who you are, helps people trust you because you're trustworthy. And it, it helps people know who you are. Because... If you're constantly saying one thing about yourself, but then showing another, right? You say you're a great basketball player, but you're shitty. You, you know, say you've got a lot of money, but you know you never help people out. You can never afford to to donate to the poor. You know, you say all these things, and they're not in line with your character. Then people start looking at you with a side eye glance, and they say, "Well, you're not really a trustworthy person. I'm not. I wouldn't invite you to my home. I don't really, you know, like." want to be around you because I, I can't feel at peace because you're constantly lying about who you are. You're fake. No one likes a fake person. So be authentic. Be real. Be honest. That's all I've got to say on honesty. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> all right, everyone. Quick little plug for my book, Modern Misery, How 21st Century Man Can Conquer His Iniquities and Release the Badass Gentleman Within. It's a book about how man can overcome the multitude of of issues facing him in the 21st century, how he can overcome those things and reach his full potential. Uh, in the book, you will find that I am certainly not perfect. I make that very clear. But these are principles that in my life I think have directed me in, on the right path many a time. And so the first half of the book is about a bunch of virtues that I think modern man needs more than anything. And then the second half of the book is a uh, amalgam of the advice that I have received from a ton of older men that I really respect who you know I, I have seen their lives and they have lived very virtuous and, and amazing lives and they are truly happy. You can tell that they have this sense of peace and contentment about them. And so I've garnered a lot of knowledge from them and so I put that into this book. I hope it helps you. If you're interested, go to Amazon. There will be a link in the description below. Buy the book, give it a read, let me know what you think. And that's all. Let's get back to the podcast. All right, everyone, we are on to section two of the podcast where we talk about a stat or a article or a trend concerning manliness in the 21st century and this stat today oh it's big it's really big so according to the national health and nutrition examination survey this was taken from 2017 to march of 2020 so like right right after covid started up i guess and i cannot imagine these numbers got better but according to that survey the percentage of men over age 20 who are obese is 41.9%. That means in America that almost half of our male population is obese. So why does this matter? Why does this matter? Why are we talking about this on a podcast where we talk about men becoming happy? Well, obesity is not good for men. Hot take. Isn't that crazy? Obesity is not good for men. Now, I got a few pounds I should shed, 100%. Um, but I'm not obese, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason that I, I steer clear of that because obesity takes away – and I, I mean, listen, I, I know people have different circumstances. I know that 
Life can be hard. I get that. Life is hard for everyone, though. So there's that aspect. But <clears throat> obesity takes away a lot of, of different faculties that a man should have. It hurts your mental health. You know, like it hurts your uh, your your physical abilities. It hurts your your spiritual health. Uh, all these things, your relational health. It takes you out of the running for a lot of things that otherwise in your life you could do. The variety in your life that makes it spicy, that makes it fun, isn't there as much. You know, if somebody asks you to go on a five mile hike with them, you you literally can't. You know, like the average person who's like in okay shape, like I'm kind of just in okay shape. Like I could go for a five mile hike. Sure, I'd be sore as hell the next day, but I could do it. My buddy goes and asks me to do that, and I want to hang out with my buddy. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go do it. I'll go do it. And so uh, this is not me trying to rail against, like, fat people, but it's just these are the stats. And so it's it's worth talking about. You know, we were just talking about honesty and telling the truth. Well, damn it, here is, here is the truth. You know, over 41% of the male population in my country is obese. That's problematic. And so – so, you know, why is this? My quick and easy answer is that comfort is castrating our men. Comfort, you know, whether it's the food or the just amazing environments we've been able to create in our house where we can change things to within a degree. I mean, damn it. We can be like, I, man, 72, that's too cold. But 73, oh, that's just right. You know, like you can literally change the air temperature in your house by a degree. You have machines that wash your dishes for you, that wash your clothes for you. I mean, that's crazy. We've created incredibly visually stimulating video games that people can play all the time and feel like they're part of another world and not in this world. This world, which is objectively richer, which objectively makes your life better when you choose to be in it. Comfort is castrating our men. Comfort in the sense of, you know, like, yeah, these super addictive foods that are made in a lab that people are like, you know, and don't get me wrong. I love them, man. I DQ's blizzards, like those things are not good for you. I freaking love a blizzard every now and then. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. Doritos, they taste great. But these things are bad for you, objectively. They're they're ultra processed, and they make you super fat. And that leads to tons of problems down the road. I'm not saying this to be a jackass. I'm saying this because I want people to get better. I want people to be happier, and I want people to to live the fullest lives they can. And the truth is, if you're you know 90 pounds overweight, 150 pounds overweight, you're not living the best life you could live. And I think most people who are in that situation would admit to that. They wouldn't be like, well, my life's the best. Because I get to just eat as much food as I want. No, they wouldn't say that. They'd say, yeah, if you look at things, I am missing out on a broad spectrum of the things which make life fun and make it enjoyable. And I don't want that for anyone. I really don't. Uh, you know. So, in conclusion, that's a bad stat. I don't know what else to say there, but you know, it, it comfort has castrated our men. You know, men, many men today, have gluttoned themselves have sloshed themselves and, like, have masturbated themselves into oblivion to where they literally, like, are at points where they cannot enjoy basic functions of life. Going on a walk with a loved one, you know? Like, uh, (laughs) being able to fit on an airplane. Like, these things shouldn't be issues for your average guy who's 22 years old. These, you know, should be... Very common occurrences that all men can partake in. And so don't limit yourself to that pool. Don't limit yourself to just being able to do a certain few things in your life that relegate you to a, a sad, you know, non-mobile life. We, we're humans that were made to move. We're creatures that were made to run, to enjoy life, you know, and to be, be virile and, like, you know, smell the scent of the roses in the air and, and be able to go do difficult things with our bodies and with our minds. Not to be slugs. We're not Jabba the Huts. It's not what we're called to be. So, anyways, that's the second part of this podcast. I know it was harsh, but it was the truth. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching the second part of the podcast. Let's move on to the third podcast section, Ruben Rants. Our teenage class is being robbed of meaningful fun. They're being robbed of it. And I'm here to set things straight. It is time that we change 
the laws on liability. What do I mean? It's time to make the onus legally fall on the people on the property and not the property owners themselves. Let me dive a little deeper. The laws surrounding, you know, uh, property owners and what they're responsible for on their property need to change because it is all these landmarks, all these fun things that kids used to go do, they can't do anymore. Things that my father and my mother talked about while, when they were growing up, like we go do these crazy ass things and they create these awesome memories. And yeah, people might, might have died if things had gone the wrong way and we made X decision and Y and Z might've occurred. Thankfully Y did because if Z would, would have occurred, then you know, Ted might have died, you know, like, but there was that inherent, like, it's risky, but it's fun, and we're going to go do it, and it's going to create memories, and we know, we, we understand that, like, yeah, there are consequences to our actions. That's part of growing up. If you, if something bad happens on someone else's property when they weren't there and they weren't overseeing anything, that's not their fault. It's yours. Tough luck, kid. Like, Okay, you wanted to go make out on the on the water tower. I'm pro that, man. Go do it. That'll be fun. Go climb the the water tower with your significant other and go go make out. You know what? Like, go for it. That would probably be a fun, fun memory. If one of you falls off and dies, that's not the the public's fault. That's not the taxpayer's fault that you fell off the water tower. Like, sure, it's sketchy. Sure, it's scary. That's part of the fun. This is what people don't understand. Parents try and coddle everybody and and like put little pillows on every pointy thing in the world so that you don't hurt yourself and then it's like you're taking away the fun this is what made it enjoyable this is what got people fired up they look back and they're like yeah man last friday night Susie and i went up to the 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 water tower and we were like 150 feet up it was a tits if we would have fallen off one of us might have died but thankfully everything turned out right and it turns out most of the time the vast majority of the time Things turned out okay. Things turned out okay. I think kids should be able to run into an abandoned house that hasn't been touched in years. And the owner shouldn't have to piss himself if he hears one of those kids gets hurt. It's like, oh, I better get sued. Change the law. Change the law surrounding that. Because it's it's robbing kids of doing all these fun things. Not just kids. David, I'm 23. I'm still kind of a kid. But it's robbing me of fun things I like to do. Okay? So, like... You you can see if you're watching that I'm wearing a Gatlinburg, Tennessee hoodie. I love that place. I love Gatlinburg. It's uh it's kind of a mystical uh beautiful little little area in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. Um not the Rocky Mountains, sorry. The the Smoky Mountains, my apologies. Uh like in the heart of the Smoky Mountains. There's fog everywhere. It's beautiful. There are these streams, there are these rocks, there are these uh giant just crazy rock outcroppings at the top of these mountains with these amazing views and yeah they're kind of treacherous at times some of these landmarks some of these these places way up in the mountains and uh here's a little story here's a little story uh and we've got we would have gotten our asses chewed out for this i mean we would have gotten in so much trouble had we been caught doing this but my sister and i and this old lady we just made friends with who was like 40 something years old. She was packing heat. She was hilarious. Um, but you know, we were walking along this path and there was this huge like gate and it said, do not go past this point. Dangerous cliff ahead. I didn't stop us. Oh no, no, no. We kept on going. Uh, and so we, we, you know, found a way around the gate, big whoop. And we went out on this rock outcropping, and it was a little scary. And there was a little bit of an angle, and you were like, there was this mountain that you, you had like a five-foot area to crawl on the very tippy top of the crest of this mountain. But damn, the view was amazing. And we met this lady. I'm pretty sure her name was Carol. I'm not positive, but I think it was Carol. We met this lady, and we had this great time, and she was just cracking all these jokes. She was hilarious, and we were doing something that definitely was illegal. We were told, don't go past the gate. Don't go past the gate. Uh, and yet, people are, are so afraid of that nowadays because, like, you get your ass chewed out. You get in huge trouble. You can get fined. You can have to pay tons of money if you get caught in these circumstances. And I'm just saying, it used to be back in the day, I'd hear all these crazy stories from people in the 80s and the 90s who were like, yeah, we did some whack shit. And it was fun. I mean, it was really fun. Like, we, we went and did some, like, 
just crazy things. And so I've noticed even the years that I've gone back to uh, to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, growing up, more and more areas are getting shut off. You know, it's like, you don't go here. You can't go here. Here's some red tape. Here's some yellow tape. Caution, caution. You can't go past this point. And those are some of the best places to go. They're gorgeous. They're amazing. And you're robbing me of that. I'm sick and tired of it. And you're robbing teenagers of having fun, meaningful stuff that they'll get to tell their kids someday. They'll get to say, yeah, me and your mom, you know, way back when, we climbed up to the top of the, of the uh, you know, the water tower. And we, we made out and we looked at the stars. And that was when I first told her I loved her. You know, and all these amazing stories. But nowadays, you got cameras everywhere. You know, you go and start climbing the first couple of rinks and you hear, wee, wee, wee. like you're getting in trouble right away. And it's because of these stupid liability laws. It's like, I'm sorry. If you fall out of the water tower, that's on you. That's on you. All right. That's not the person who owns the property's fault. You were the one who made the conscious decision to go climb to the top of the water tower. No one forced your ass up that ladder. You took the steps. And then if you fall off and you break an arm, or you fall off and you break your neck and you die. Guess what? That's a risk you took. That's part of what made the experience fun. It was like this really crazy thing. If I'm stupid up here and I don't like have something to grab onto at all times, if I'm stupid, this stupid, crazy, drastic, you know, um, death-inducing thing could happen to me. That's what made it fun. That's what made it fun. And there have been a lot of times in my own life, you know, I, I've been blessed to live in the country for most of my life, out in the sticks, as they say. And I've done some things that, like, yeah, I could have died doing, but totally worth it. 100%. They're they're some of my favorite memories. Uh, So the point is we got to stop babying all these different sites that you used to be able to go to that would be fun. It's like, I I mean, I'm not the kind of person that wants to go and run into an abandoned house. But if you're a teenager and you want to go do that and it's an abandoned house that's been abandoned for, like, 15 years, you want to run in there and maybe, like, I don't know, the floorboards aren't aren't safe or it's not structurally sound like it's an abandoned house you haven't been in there for no one's been in there for eight years it's kind of creepy there's rumors that it's haunted that makes for a good time with your buddies you're like hey it's nine o'clock at night i'm gonna go check out this abandoned house but nowadays if you get caught with that you're getting in huge trouble why because these stupid liability laws so change the liability laws let the liability fall on the people on the property not the property owner themselves I rest my case. Get that shit out of here. I'm done with liability laws. Change them. Change them. I'm talking to you, United States government. Let's make it happen. (laughs) All right, everyone. That ends this episode of the Manuscript Podcast. This was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a blast. I hope you guys got something out of this episode that will help you progress towards becoming a better man. And maybe I gave you a few laughs on the way. I hope I did. Uh, Thank you so much for watching this episode. As always, remember, there's a better life out there. Let's get after it. Oh, and please subscribe. See you next time.